Hi guys, Jack here. In this video we're going to uh, add, subtract, multiply and divide some fractions with negative signs now and we're going to introduce in question 4 and 5 how to convert from fraction form to decimal form. And the times of the questions are in red so feel free to skip to that question. Okay, question one in this video. Now, in the last video we did a lot of work with fractions. We did some subtraction, addition, multiplication, and division. Now this one in the first question, it isn't much harder to be honest, but we're going to integrate some negative numbers in there, okay? So we have this negative number here, negative number here, and negative number here. Now, similar to integers, they use exactly the same rules, okay? So nothing much new here. Okay, let's go ahead and do this fraction. Well, we have negative 6 divided by 7 plus 2 over 7. Now, remember with the golden rules when we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need the denominator to be the same for it to be a pretty easy process from then on. And as they are, well, we can just do the top process as it looks. We can go negative 6 plus 2. Well, that's just going to be negative 4. Divided by, and remember, because this number is the same, we can just put that number as our denominator. So our answer is negative 4 over 7. And that is in its simplest form, which we always want to try and get our fractions to. Simplest form. That's what's easy for the teacher to understand. Okay, question 2. We have 1 over 4 plus this negative 1 over 3. Okay, now just like in maths, if I had 5 plus negative 3... We can go, okay, 5 plus, and then we have to take away 3. So that just equaled 2, okay? So exactly the same in fractions. We have this quarter, or 1 over 4, and we can essentially make this plus and minus just into one big minus sign, okay? So now, the denominators aren't the same. So what do we need to do? We need to use that process of find the lowest common multiple. Well, what that is is the lowest number that both of these numbers go into. Now, I know, a bit of practice, and I might skip a step here, but 12 right, is the lowest number that both of these numbers go into. Because 4 goes into 12, and 3 goes into 12. So straight away, I can write 12, and remember, it's just one big minus sign now. 12. Now, what did we do to get this side, right, 4, to 12? Right? Well, we need to times 4 by 3 to get to 12. Now, with fractions, whatever you do to the top or bottom, you need to do it to the other, top or bottom. Now we times the bottom by 3, or we need to times the top by 3. So that fraction now turns into 3 over 12. Minus. Now to get from 3 to 12, we times it by 4, so times the top by 4. Right? So now we're left with this fraction where the denominators are the same. We can just do the top as it looks. So 3 minus 4 is minus 1 over this same denominator, 12. And that's obviously its lowest form because the top's 1. Okay, last one. We have 1 over 2 minus, minus 3 over 5. Just like in integers in the earlier videos, we have a minus, a minus number. We can cross that out and put it into a big plus because a minus minus turns into a plus. So we're left with 1 over 2 plus 3 over 5. Now, denominators aren't the same. Let's get it into its lowest common multiple which is 10, because 2 goes into 10, and 5 goes into 10. We have this plus sign, 10. We got 2 to 10 by times it by 5, so we times the top by 5, just like here. And we got the 5 to 10 by times it by 2, so let's times the top by 2. 3 times 2 is 6, so let's do the top. 5 plus 6 is 11 over 10, and there is our answer. Question two, we are going to multiply some fractions, just like in uh, the multiplication of fraction video. But now we have some negative numbers, and it's, again, using the exactly the same rules of, of uh, multiplying with negative numbers in integers. Okay, so rule of thumb, positive number times a positive number, positive number. If one of them are negative, it becomes a negative number. And if they're both negative, two negatives multiply to be a positive. So using that, we can just use a simple 
process of solving these questions. Right? So it's this fraction, which is going to be multiplied, so we can just multiply the top. Well, 3 times, and now this is negative 4. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. Um, put a little negative sign there. And 5 times 7 is 35. Now, is that in its lowest form? Well, 3 doesn't go. 6, yep, lowest form. That's our answer. Okay, so on here we have a negative sign, a negative sign, so we know our answer is going to be positive. So we can multiply the top. 1 times 4 is 4. And 3 times 5 is 15. Is that in its simplest form? Sure is. Okay, pretty easy this, this video. Again, we have one negative sign and a positive one, so our answer is going to be negative. So we can go to the top line. 3 times 4 is 12. Make sure there's a minus sign because there's a minus fraction there. And the bottom one is 9 times 7, 63. Now, I showed you where I saw. Now, I know 3 goes into 12 because 3 times 4 is 12. And 63 is very close to 60. Right? And 63 goes into 60. So 3 must go into 63. So we can use that. 3 is a factor. Right? Now, it might not be the highest common factor. But let's just use our, our factor technique. So, let's divide top and bottom by 3. We have minus 4 over 21. Now, can this be simplified anymore? Well, 1, 2, and 4. No, that's our answer. So, there are our three answers to multiplying fractions with a negative sign. Okay, question 3. We are going to divide two fractions, and we're going to have some negative signs in here, okay, similar to the previous video. Now, remember our golden rule when we are dividing fractions, it's very similar to multiplying fractions, but what we have to do, remember, we have to flip the second one, okay? So, I'll go ahead and do these questions and let's see how we do it. So, remember, we keep the first fraction. Right. Now, we can change this to a multiplication sign if we flip the second one. What I mean by flip is make the bottom the top and the top the bottom. Okay. Now, similar to question two, we can go do the top and do the bottom. Well, minus five times four, negative twenty, divided by twenty-one, and that is its simplest form. All right. Question two, we have two negative signs. Remember when we we have a, a multiplication or division, right, two fractions or two numbers, and there's two negative signs. It's going to be a positive answer. So remember, let's do the flip thing first. We can go negative 2 divided by 3, and we can change that divide to a times, and we can flip, keeping the minus sign, the second fraction. Right? Now we can do the top. Well, negative 2 times negative 4 is going to be 8, and the bottom 3 times 5, 15. And that is our simplest form. Now the last one might be a little bit tricky because there's a fraction here, but there's not a fraction here. This is a whole number, like 4. But we can make 4 into a fraction if we want, pretty easily, by going 4 divided by 1. Because what that means is there's 4 over 1. It's the same as just 4. 4 over anything over 1 is just itself. Okay, So I just want to maybe put a bit of a trick question here, but make sure all that means is divided by 1. Okay. Well, there's one negative sign, this is positive, so our answer's going to be negative. We know that, keep it in our head. But we need to do that flipping thing first. Times, let's flip this, 1 over 4. And to the top, negative 3 times 1, negative 3. To the bottom, 20. And there is our answer. Question 4. We want to rewrite these fractions in decimal form. Now, this is the first time... We've probably dealt with the word decimal. Now, you probably would have heard it right, before, before now, but we actually want to convert these fractions to decimal form. Now, decimal form is when you have you know, some number, maybe like 4.21, yada, yada, yada. See how we have a point and then some numbers. Now, this is decimal form, not fractions anymore. We have a number divided by a number. We have decimals. So this could be... I'm not sure, your average, if you average out the class of all your marks out of a test of five, you might have an average of 4.21 than that. Okay, so that's what decimal form is. Now, the way we get into that, right, decimal form, is we need to get pretty much a shortcut method 
is the denominator of 100. Now what that means is, it'll make more sense after we start doing a lot more questions, but that'll give us a really good step into getting into, into a fraction, into decimal form. Okay, so bear with me here. We want to get 3 divided by 5. We want to get this 5 into 100. Right, now, how do we go 5 into 100? We times it by 20. Right? So, just like fractions, if you times the bottom by 20, we need to times the top by 20. So, we had 3 over 5, and we changed it into 60 over 100. Now, notice here, just, just in our head, this is a number, right? And it's a number less than 1, okay? Because this is pretty much at 60 over 100. So this could be, like I said, a test, test and a score. 60 out of 100. So it's a number less than 1, right? So it's going to be 0 point something, okay? That's our first sort of step. If it was a number bigger than 1, if this number at the top was bigger than the bottom number, it's a number greater than one, okay? So if you didn't know that, that's kind of the rule of thumb we're gonna work with. Because the top number's smaller than the bottom number, right? it's gonna be zero point, less than one. Now 60 divided by 100, right? we can write as 0 0.60, okay? Because this is the, ten, if you wanna work in decimals, this is the first one after the decimal number. So it's the first, Point after the, it's the first number after the point sign. Now, six, 60 over 100 can be written like that. Now, I know that might be a little bit confusing, but we're going to do a lot more practice of it, okay? So, notice just how we want to get it into the denominator of 100, and we can get our decimal answer pretty, pretty quickly. Okay, how do we get this with a denominator of 100? We times it by 5. So, we need to times the top by 5, or 5 times 11 is... 55. Now notice here, this number is smaller than 1, so it's going to be 0 point something, okay? Now, similar to here, well, 55 over 100 can be written like that. So notice here, if we get it over 100, right, we can just write this number after the decimal. Whatever this number, in, whatever this number is, we can write it straight away. Right? So that's sort of the pattern I'm trying to lead on with here. If we ended up, I don't know, with some other uh, fraction with a top number of 2 over 100. Uh, notice here, 60, 60, 55, 55. If it's 2, okay, here's the lot of it's less than 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. It's the only exception. You have to put 0 and then the number, okay? Because this will make sense the more questions you do. If it was 20, uh, so you couldn't just put the 2 straight away here, because that would be 20. So if it was just 2, you'd have to put 0 and 2. Now I know I might be putting a lot of words in your head, but with more practice, these will be a lot easier. Now the last one here, okay, this is one of those fractions that we dealt with in the last video, where we have a full number and then a fraction. So this is 8 and 17 over 100. Okay. Now this number here, well, you already know it's bigger than 1 because it already has 8 full numbers. So I can go straight out on a limb and go 8 point. Now, this fraction here is already a number divided by 100. Like I said before, if this number here, we can just put it straight away. So 8 and 17 over 100 can just be written in decimal form as 8.17. Okay, in question five, we want to rewrite these decimal numbers in fraction form. Now, this is the opposite to question four. In question four, we had fractions, we wanted to write them in decimal form. Okay. Now, remember what we did in question four. We wanted to get the number, uh, whatever the top was, divided by 100. And then we could put that number straight away after the decimal point. Okay, now, we need to remember that in order to, to quickly solve some of these questions. If that was the case, then we can go straight away and write 31 over 100. Because in question 4, we got it over 100, and we put 0 point, straight away that number. So that's going to be our answer to this question. We've rewritten that, uh, the decimal in fraction form. Now this can't be simplified anymore, so that is actually our answer. Alright, notice here, we always had two two-digit numbers, like 31 or 42. 
right? And we can write them straight away as our answer, okay? This time, right, we have three numbers. Now, you can either do two things here. I like to do this intermediate step just to, just to keep it along the lines of what we were doing in the earlier question. If we wanted to make this a two-digit number, right, 81, you can just put 81 and a half or 81.5. And if we did that, we put it over 100, just like we did the golden rule. But this, we don't really like decimals in fraction form. So the last step here is we want to get rid of this or put it one that way. Right? Then we can change this top number to 815. Now if we put it one this way, again, what we're actually doing here is 81.5, we're timesing it by 10. Or shift the decimal sign once. Okay? So that's probably the trickiest part to that question. If we do that by 10, we have to times the bottom by 10. Or shift it one that way. Okay? So what actually I get our answer now is we get 815 divided by a thousand, not a hundred this time, a thousand, because we times the top by ten and the bottom by ten. Okay, so if you wanted to jump straight to the answer, notice here, two digit number, right? Well, we have one with two zeros. Three digit number, 815. We can write the full number, 815, and put, if there's three digits, three zeros, or a thousand. Okay, so that's our rule of thumb from now on. I just wanted to, to show how we get there, okay? This last one, well, we want it in fraction form. Now we already have 5.35. Well, like those fractions we're working with in question four, I'm gonna go straight out and put five. So we have five full numbers at the moment, okay? Now, 0.35, or similar to 0.31, we can do as 35 over 100. So that could be your answer. Now, uh, some hooks might say that's your answer, but if they want it in complete fraction form, as in just a number over a number, okay, we can do that technique that we learned in the last video, all right? If we want to convert this into one fraction using the, the Fox family rule of thumb of converting this. And what we did was we times this number by this and plus this. So 5 times 100 is 500 plus 35, which is 535 divided by 100. So either that or that can be your answer. Either or, whatever the, the teacher wants better. So there's our answers.